Ferrari morning, my friends. It's half past five, it's not morning. So I don't know what that was about. But today I'm going to talk about all the books I read this summer. Summer 2020, best summer of our lives, am I right? No. I feel like with summer, there's always so much pressure to go out, to live your life, to be, to have a holiday summer romance, um, go to the lake and tra travel and do summery stuff. But all you really want to do is stay inside, read books and watch films. So this summer was quite good for that, I guess. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm the only one. Nonetheless, I didn't actually read that many books, so I don't know what this whole thing, this whole speech just then was about. But I'm just gonna start telling you what I read. Uh, a lot of the books I read were audiobooks or on my Kindle, so I can't hold them up, sadly. But I, I think that's fine. Um, okay, I, I hope you don't mind, is what I wanted to say. Okay, the first book I read was The Power of Ritual by Casper Ter Kyle. I know, like know of Casper Ter Kyle from a podcast I used to listen to a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, and I still listen to now on and off, which is Harry Potter and the Sacred Text. It's this kind of podcast where they, him and his friend Vanessa um, go through the Harry Potter books and talk about every Harry Potter book under the lens of a certain theme, like family, love, Loneliness. Um, yeah, and the, I love the podcast and I really like Casper, so I thought I would give his book a go and I really, I really did enjoy it. Um, the book is about rituals and how we can implement kind of our own rituals and develop our own community in everyday life. Casper Ter Kyle is at Harvard Divinity School, so he um, knows a lot about religion and kind of religious rituals and religious communities and what kind of traditions they hold. So he tries to take these and give people a way to implement these kind of ideas in a kind of non-religious context if you want. If you want to make it religious, of course you can. And shows you how to kind of build up a community, make your own life a bit more sacred and full of ritual for you by giving you examples from his own life or from his research. It's kind of the idea that you can make your life a bit more special and sacred and kind of combat the loneliness that the digital world has caused um, yeah, in people's lives. For example, he says that sitting down having a meal with someone can be a ritual you waking up every day to go on a walk can be a ritual going to spin class can be a ritual for you taking everyday things and making them a bit more special and more meaningful and i really enjoyed the book i thought it was really interesting and fun especially because i'm not religious and didn't really know a lot about these kind of religious rituals and also i feel like in life sometimes kind of this community aspect is missing like a day-to-day -day life it's all about the grind the nine-to-five life baby and um, it's kind of a nice idea to try to implement this feeling of community into your life so i really really enjoyed it if you're interested in that kind of thing um i would definitely give it a read i don't think it's very like theoretical or difficult to read i um i listened to it so it was just it was just a good time all around i have like a starfish down here <laughs> And I keep banging against it. I'm gonna move you, sir. Okay. The next book I read was Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. And this is the book that's like been making the rounds in the booktube world. So I thought I wanna read it. What I realized about a quarter in is that I hate romance novels. So everything I say now will be kind of tinged by the fact that I didn't, I don't like romance novels. So the story is about Chloe Brown, um, a woman from a quite yeah, wealthy family um, who has a chronic illness. And through a certain incident, she decides that she has to get a life. She decides her illness has kind of stopped her from doing the things she wants to do and um, decides to make this list and then commit to fulfilling these points on the list. And we follow her doing this. 
And one of the first points is to move into her own flat, which she does pretty early on in the book. And this is where she meets Red, Redford, a very hot man who, well, that was the uncoolest thing I've ever done. <laughs> very hot guy, uh, a handsome boy, who man, who um, is kind of the maintenance guy in the building she lives in. And she realizes he's kind of a rebel, a bad boy. So she's going to enlist him to help her fulfill the points on the list. And that's basically what it's about. And mainly about the relationship between Chloe and Red, which turns into a steamy romance. Um, and that's where I started to lose interest. I was really into the idea that she makes a list to like make her life more interesting. But as soon as it got to the romance, which was the main part of the book, I realized that uh, I don't care. <laughs> Sounds a bit rude. Uh, I just realized I don't like romance, but that's my own issue. So if you enjoy romance in any way, if you feel like you like love stories, I would 100% recommend this because this was so interesting. Things I really liked about it, for example, was just how healthy and nice their relationship was. It wasn't toxic at all. It was just, they were so kind to each other. There was the scene where Red's in Chloe's flat and he's like, damn, she's sexy. And she's like, damn, he's sexy. <laughs> God, I'm so, I'm so uncool. She's just, her illness is getting in the way. So she's exhausted, she's tired. And yeah, she wants to be with Red, but she also just, her body's telling her to lie down and sleep. And even though she's into Red, she's like considering like sleeping with him or whatever. He then says, I'll come by tomorrow and let you r rest. And I don't know why I was so shocked by this, but I'm so used to romance novels being like, she was feeling like shit, but she didn't care because she was in love with him and he didn't give a fuck. He just couldn't resist his urges. That kind of, <laughs> oh God, that kind of thing. But um, it was just so nice to see him be like, you, you rest see you tomorrow, see how you're feeling. And she was like, okay, I'll rest. And it was nice. It was just really nice to see. And yeah, even though I didn't really enjoy it because it's a romance, as I said, I did keep thinking about it a lot afterwards. And I always think that's a good sign for a book is when you're like actively thinking about it days after. And that definitely happened to me. So I think if you're into romance, hell yeah, give this one a go. I'm just a bit like, cynical and bitter and don't really want to read about romance too much but that's just my problem <laughs> the next book i read was city of ghosts by victoria schwab schwab which is kind of middle grade young fantasy novel and it was just a few hours long it was really fun i i really enjoyed it it's about this girl called cassidy who can see ghosts she got into an accident where she almost died which um, led her to be able to see ghosts. And her best friend is now a ghost called Jacob. Her parents are ghost hunters and are commissioned to have this ghost hunting show, which I would watch. The first location where they're shooting the show is in Edinburgh in Scotland. And so Cassidy, her best ghost friend and the parents moved to Edinburgh to film there for a week. And ghostly, Fun occurs. So we just follow Cassidy in Edinburgh, going to these like very historical and old places like the castle, the Royal Mile, and just experience ghostly things and an adventure ensues. It was like the thing I would have loved to read when I was maybe 15, 16. So I did enjoy it still now and was kind of sad that I didn't discover it earlier. Um, and I also enjoyed it because I lived in Scotland for a while and I visited Edinburgh often. I have some family there, so I actually knew all the locations in the book, which was so cool. And I'm gonna recommend it to some friends who still live in Edinburgh to be like, you'll know the castle. Okay, everyone knows the castle, but I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really fun, easy breezy, Halloween-y read. Good for this time of year. Okay, the next book I read is an actual copy. I can hold in my hands. And it's The Interestings by Meg Wallitzer. And oh my God, when I tell you I love this book, I love this book. <laughs> well, this book is a very long read, very complex kind of long story, 
but oh my god, I gobbled that shit up. Okay, I feel like I'm a, like an old lady who tries to talk like the youth, but I I swear, this is just how I talk in the every in everyday life. But it's not it's not very attractive. Anyway, it's about <laughs> the book is about a group of people, um, six teenagers who go to this summer camp. It's, it starts in the 70s, and it's a summer camp for creative talented youths um, outside of New York who just want to be creative and cool. The main character is Jules Jacobson, who I found very lovely, very relatable, very cool woman, who's just kind of awkward, very funny teenage girl who kind of slips into this group of really cool teenagers. For example, there's this boy named Jonah, who's the son of a very talented folk musician. His mom is like really famous. There's Ethan, this guy who's really into animation and comics. Ash, who's this beautiful, talented girl who wants to be an actress from a very wealthy family. And her brother Goodman, who's like a very bad boy. And Kathy, this tall, blonde, beautiful girl who wants to be a dancer. And the six of them meet, decide to call themselves the interestings because they're self-obsessed teenagers, weren't we all? And we just follow their story throughout their lives until they're kind of middle-aged and have their own children. And it's just about the relationships they all have, how they stay together, don't stay in touch, and how the kind of hopes and dreams they had for their lives because they're all kind of um, artistic and talented and hope to do something with that one day and how kind of life shows them that not everything you want will happen and how um, just how their relationships change, how their jobs change, how their wishes and dreams change. And I was obsessed with this book. I was so like hooked from the very beginning. Um, I love the main character Jules. I thought she was so fascinating because she is the, the like relatable girl you would just be friends with. A thing I also loved were just the friendships in this book. Um, Ethan and Jules are really, really good friends. And Ethan turns out to be quite successful in his career and how their relationship is influenced by this and how it has this theme of soulmates. You don't have to be romantically involved to be soulmates. And then there's also the relationship, the friendship between Ash and Jules, which I really, really liked because it was this kind of just a friendship between two women that wasn't they weren't competing they were just supporting each other and they had highs and lows but were there for each other even when they had their own kids and were dealing with their like, adult issues and it was just such a fascinating and interesting book and i definitely want to read another book by meg wallitzer so if you're into kind of 70s 80s artist world and then growing up themes of adulthood this is for you baby this is for you sorry i called you baby i feel like that was kind of rude an audiobook i listened to was notes to self essays by emily pine emily pine is an irish woman who decided to write short essays about her life and put them together to a book a memoir as you would say each essay is like on a theme in her life for example her fa father's alcoholism her infertility, um, the role of a woman in the 21st century, um, kind of laws about abortion and miscarriage, etc. in Ireland. I listened to the audiobook and Emily was kind of really soft-spoken and really clever and just so, 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 so vulnerable in the book. It, oof, it was really kind of heartbreaking to listen to, but also really, really lovely. And it was just about the relationship with the people in her life and yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. And I thought she spoke about some things that kind of women don't dare to speak about sometimes. Just the kind of story about her miscarriages and infertility and not being able to have children was really, really sad and beautiful to me. And I just thought it was just kind of a, the reflection she made about her own life was just so beautiful. And I really recommend it if you want a real, um, kind of hard to listen to but also really eye-opening memoir okay the next one pray for me <laughs> well this book broke my heart and put it back together again i saw this book in um elias reed's vlog 
and I had to read it because he said it was beautiful and I trust him very much. Even though I don't know him, I'm sure he's very trustable. The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. And this book will break your heart. Girl, it'll break your heart. But it's the most beautiful book ever, 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 ever. <laughs> oh man. It's about this middle-aged man called Linus Baker. And he lives in a world where there's magical beings and normal people, muggles, you and me, sadly. And he works for the government in a sector that's in charge of overseeing orphanages for magical children. The way I said that was so complicated, but his job is to go to different orphanages and to see if the children are being treated right and if the living standards are okay in a world where magical beings are kind of outcast and seen as dangerous. The story sets off when Linus is asked to go to kind of a special island um, to overlook an orphanage for very specific, special, dangerous children. So he has to go to this orphanage and stay there for a month and see if everything is a-okay, if the children are being treated right and if everything is going according to the rule book. <laughs> and so we follow Linus' so story, getting to the house, getting to know the children and getting to know the man who runs the orphanage, Arthur. <sniffs> Love him. And just how Linus, who's le lived a very solitary, simple, conventional life, discover what life can be like. So he falls in love with the people at the orphanage. And it's just kind of like, at the beginning of the book, Linus's life is so kind of gray and dreary. And like, I feel like throughout the book, just color is thrown at Linus and makes his life so colorful, beautiful. And oh my God, thinking about it makes me almost cry. Linus is such a sweet, kind man. And you just feel his loneliness and how he gets to know these people and it's slowly, changes him, he changes the kids, it's so beautiful. I feel like that was like the school of rock line. Not only did the kids touch me, I touched them. You know, when Jack Black, never mind. Okay. So whoo, that book, <laughs> highly recommend. It will make you cry, it will make you laugh. And it just makes you wanna enjoy the little things in life and just be grateful and see the world and Live your best life, honey. Well, no, that's not what it does. Okay, the next book I read, very much in contrast to The House in the Cerulean Sea, is We Are Never Meeting in Real Life by Samantha Irby. I think she used to like write blog posts, and this is a collection of essays from her blog with addition to essays she wrote for the book, I think. And it's just basically stories from her life her kind of views on certain things and what she's experienced, her opinions and just anecdotes in general. And it's really, really, really funny. The way she writes is so funny. For, the, for some reason for the first like, quarter, I couldn't really get into it. And then at some point it just got me and I just suddenly got really obsessed with it. She's just so outspoken and completely herself and so so funny and it kind of inspired me the way for example she has <laughs> as she has a chapter about why she loves television and just staying inside or like a story where she shits herself in a friend's car and she describes <laughs> how she deals with it and just everything is so kind of embarrassing but funny and real and she talks about her family life as well which is kind of heartbreaking and she has a relation she has a relationship with a cat she has a cat and their relationship is so funny because she kind of gives the cat a voice and they just hate each other the cat's really rude to her and she's really rude to the cat and it's just so 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 funny but um there's one scene where then the cat um spoiler alert ha is, dies and i cr sobbed i cried my eyes out it was so so sad so yeah, it has it has everything, this book. And I definitely recommend, it's the kind of thing you can read on your way to work or on a commute, that kind of thing. I listened to it as an audiobook and I thought it was kind of easy and fun and moving and you could just listen to it anywhere, basically. It was so, so, so funny. Another book I read was The New Me by Halle Butler. 
I spoke about this in one of my vlogs and it's about a woman called Millie who's 30 years old and who all her life has just had kind of temp jobs. She doesn't have a like a fixed full term employment and she's just kind of living day to day life, not really filling her life with anything. It's just basically work home, work home. She doesn't have any friends. She doesn't have a partner. She's just kind of alone and goes to her job, doesn't really make any friends. And that's kind of the cycle of her life. And then the possibility for a permanent job arises and she starts to kind of realize how she could fill her time, how her life could change now that her she could have this full-time job. Yeah, it's just about her, kind of her thoughts and how she's dealing with things. And it's a very weird book, very kind of disheartening. Not You don't really like Millie very much. She's not very nice. If, I'd say if you're like finishing university, finish school, or you're just about to start going into the adult world or um, kind of working in an office, don't read this book because you'll be terrified of the l cycle of life when you're in an office. So I definitely don't recommend um, reading that book if you're in this stage, but if you're in any other stage, it's really funny, it's really weird. It reminded me of A Year of Rest and Relaxation by Atessa Moshfeg. It's kind of fucked up, but in a good way. I, I did really enjoy it, it was really weird. And the last book I read in August was Expectation by Anna Hope. It's about three women, um, Hannah, Kate and Lissa, who live in London and kind of have this idea of what, what they want their lives to be. It starts when they're in school and ends with them in their mid thirties. And it kind of doesn't go chronologically, it jumps back and forth. And you just follow their lives from like wanting their dream careers, wanting babies, finding husbands, um, not finding husbands, just kind of how their life pans out from what they hoped they that would happen from their expectations and what actually happens. I thought I was really gonna like this book. It sounded like the interesting, which kind of blew my mind, but the thing that bothered me most was just the friendship. I read on Goodreads, I can't, I couldn't find who wrote it, but I read that someone said, you just wouldn't wanna be friends with the three of them. And that's exactly how I felt. I just didn't like them. I didn't find the friendship realistic because I thought they were just so kind of rude to each other. You know, when a story's so focused on three people, what they mean to each other and their friendship, you want, as a reader, you want to know, you want to kind of feel it and know why they feel this way. But I just c couldn't. I just didn't really care what happened to them. And especially one character, um, Lissa, who's this kind of single, beautiful woman who wants to be an actress, she's the one who she decides not to have children and throughout the book she's always kind of the baddie like she she's the one who does certain things that hurt the others i just feel like that's kind of stupid and old-fashioned to make the woman who doesn't want children the bad the like evil woman who might regret her decision no just if you want to have different perspectives let different perspectives shine through and make them understandable and not have this like underlying current of oh but she like she's made a mistake she doesn't want children if you want to have different perspectives show them in a realistic and uh well i'm getting very passionate i don't know i thought it was kind of a downer and it didn't make me feel very good <laughs> and i just didn't like the women and just the kind of highs and lows of friendships i just felt like they were mostly lows and when there were good times they just weren't very nice people i don't know i just I, don't, I wouldn't say it was really bad, but it was just kind of meh. I, I'd give it a go if you're interested in this kind of storyline and maybe you feel differently because I think it had really good reviews. It just wasn't my cup of tea, baby. So yeah, um, hmm. this was my wrap up. Um, <laughs> Woohoo! I hope you enjoyed it. I um, would love to hear your opinions if you read these books. If not, if you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear them too and i'll see you soon have a lovely day stay cool or don't if you don't want to uh, i don't know this winter is coming so we're gonna stay cool see you soon my god these endings that was horrible <laughs>